Hey! Today's video is gonna be a bit different. I've convinced myself that I need a new belt. I didn't need one, but I made one. This one. And now I'm gonna show you how I made it. But the real reason I made it is because I wanted to try my hand at leather working. And I made the belt, actually, I didn't buy this strip. And I'm quite fond of it, I'm proud of what I did, and let me show you. Thank you. Hey there, for this video we're gonna need a hexagon, so I thought it would be fun to start by showing you how to draw a hexagon. I apologize in advance for the quality of the audio because I'm gonna do it in one take and no voiceover so this is the real audio I'm just gonna talk as I draw it but when you wanna draw a hexagon the first question that needs to be answered is why? why would you want to build a hexagon? well, that's simple enough hexagons are cool if that's not good enough for you, there's another reason why woodworkers use hexagons. That's because it's one of those shapes that complements itself. Like if you have a hexagon right by the side of another hexagon, touching the edges, you can then build a third one and a fourth and keep going and you'll see that you're gonna form a surface. You can use this to cover tabletops or doors, whatever you want. And it looks kinda nice, like a beehive or something. And since you have a bunch of pieces of wood stacked together, you can round over or chamfer every edge to give it a nice texture. You can alternate colors and it's going to look nice something like so and in my case I want a hexagon because I'm going to build a belt buckle out of wood and I want to print on it my logo with if you recall from the intro just a few moments ago it's just a hexagon with a T, a bar and a S Oh, there are some markings and woodcrafts and, well, whatever. It's hexagon, that's my point. So let's draw a hexagon. What you're gonna need is something to draw with. In my case, I'm gonna use this mechanical pencil, a compass, and a straight edge. I'm not gonna use the protractor. I'm just using for the straight edge because this is the smallest one I've got. I'm gonna build a hexagon now, let's make it with a side of one inch. A quick comment on hexagons before we start drawing it though, because it might help you decide the size of the hexagon you want. Whatever side you decide on, let's do it like I did on one inch each side. Well. First of all, they're all gonna be equal. This is gonna be a regular hexagon. But it's important to know that this dimension is always gonna be exactly double the size of the, the side you decided on. And that's because all the exterior angles are gonna be 60 degrees and the cosine of 60 is one half and half the side times two, that's half here and half here, and one plus two halves equals two, whoopsie do. So, boring math aside, this is easy, trust me. You don't need to understand this. I'm not even sure I do, I just remember something, I guess. So what we need is to set our compass to one inch, in this case, this ruler is in centimeters, so it's gonna be 2.54 
centimeters. Here we go. This is an inch. We're gonna start to mark. We're gonna start by marking the first side to that inch. It should be the same as in the compass, I hope. Yeah, well, close enough. There. Now it's the same. For the next few moments, all you're gonna use is the compass. You start on one of the edges, the points, and you draw a semicircle. You go to the other side, and you do exactly the same. Now you know that this is the first side we drew. It's here. This side and this side are gonna end somewhere along these curves. Where exactly is what we need to decide? Well, discover, not decide. So without touching the width of the compass, you put it right in the center and you mark another semicircle. There you go. These two points are already these two points. So if you just connect them, you've got now three sides done. To find the last two points, you just gotta put the compass right here. If you didn't draw this line yet, it's where this curve meets this curve. And draw it here, do the same to this other side, and done. That's all there is to it. Now we just connect the sides. And you have yourself a hexagon right here. You see, I'm painting the hexagon to show you where it is. I'm so genius. Anyhow, as I said before, this distance should be double of what we started with. And this straight edge is kind of fading, but it's about right. Let me go from four to nine and something. Yeah, it sounds about right. As I said, this ruler is in centimeters, so you gotta work with what you have. There you go, there's a hexagon. Now go be happy and make some surfaces. In my case, I'm gonna make a belt buckle. So come along, let's draw it with me right on the wood. Well, not really, I'm not gonna draw it with you again, but let's make a belt buckle. As promised, here's the hexagon drew, drawn. Drawed? I'll go with drawn. Drawn into a piece of wood that I'm actually gonna use. I'm use these scraps of jatoba. And to start, I'm just gonna let go of the excess wood here to get closer to the figure. This build is gonna be a small build, so most of the cuts are actually gonna be a bit hard to see on camera. But it's not supposed to be hard. You're just cutting to the lines you drew. Draw? Well, you drew. Hopefully. And all you do is line the pencil marking you made with the curve of your blade, clearly set on the crosscut sled. If you have a square with a 30 degrees angle, you can use it like I am here to reference and leave a 60 degrees off cut in comparison to the 9 degree, 90 degrees that you're using the crosscut sled with. It's gonna work for the first three sides, then you're gonna have like a triangle or something, and you just reference the first cut you made as a 90 degrees or 180 degrees here, cut the opposite side and then you can do the 30 degrees again. 
it might not make a lot of sense when I explain it like this, but when you draw the hexagon on the wood and you go and try to make those cuts, it's gonna make sense. It's quite intuitive actually. The lines just line up as they should. And once you made six cuts, one for each side of the hexagon, you're gonna have this. One of these at least. You could be using a miter saw, but I don't have one. It probably would be easier. But you can do it on the table saw just as I shown. Then you give it a light sanding to get rid of those tear out marks on the edges. And we go for the next piece. Here I'm trying to show you, yes, that's what I'm going to cut. This is quite a small piece and I'm gonna need two of them. Well, I thought I would, I only actually used one, but the way you cut such small pieces is you leave it attached to a bigger piece of wood and cut as if you were going to just make a detail on the end of the board. That way your hands don't have to come anywhere near the blade when you make those cuts and it's a lot safer. You just stop the cuts a bit after what you need but don't go through the whole board. That way you can cut your lines even on smaller pieces without getting close. I'm even resawing here a bit and as was for the rest of the cuts, I only used the end of the board for that. Then with the crosscut sled you just cut them out and they should be ready actually. I failed to show on camera the piece that I just made, but here on the sander you can kind of have a look. It's really small though, I warned you. Don't forget to leave a like if you find this information useful somehow. It helps me keep motivated to continue working, so give me a hand. Originally I intended to use two of those for the passer and the end of the belt, I don't know the actual names here, but I decided to make a larger one and that's what I'm cleaning here. Let me pause to show you that. Here is the belt buckle, here is where you're gonna attach the end of the belt when you're done, and here's where the belt's gonna pass inside the belt buckle after looping around your waist. If you ever seen a belt buckle, that should make sense. I hope I don't know. Well, I never do. But that's not the finished piece, that's just a show. And I still have to trim a bit. I don't want it to be so bulky. And I did have some footage of that, but the piece is so small you can't actually see anything. So it's time to glue. I'm using epoxy here. I don't know why I decided to use epoxy, but don't do that, just go for regular wood glue. It's gonna be easier to apply and stronger. This actually did come loose after a few uses and I had to redo that with regular wood glue. And since then it's been holding and I think it's gonna hold forever, I hope. Clamp it and let it dry as you would for wood glue, but seriously, use wood glue. With that, most of the woodworking is out of the way, so if you're only here for that, you can go now. I hope you don't though, because the leather crafting is actually kind of fun. And the reason I'm making it is because I want to incorporate leather crafting into my woodworking. So the first thing is to attach the end of the belt to the belt buckle, but it does not fit, not even close. The gap I left was about one, one and a half millimeters, and this ladder is three millimeters thick. I don't get the ounces for thickness of ladder. I'll try to learn it in the future, but for now you're gonna have to go with millimeters. Just as a basis for comparison, three millimeters is about an eighth of an inch, if that helps. And one and a half is about a sixteenth 
Okay, not that hard. What I'm doing here is called skiving, and it took me hours to make. It's fun, but it's a lot of effort. And all it's doing is thinning out the end of the letter so that I can make it fit into the belt buckle. But seriously, if you've never tried letter crafting, give it a go, it's fun. And since there's no curve to beware of, because you just split the materials when you cut, it's refreshing, I think. There, after skiving the letter, it can fit through the loop. I want it to be tight, so this is good. I don't want it to come loose or to wiggle. And uh, show it, man, come on. Oh, I needed some time. But there you go. It's starting to look like a belt. If you paid attention, you'll see that I had a stitch line in the middle of the belt. I didn't have leather long enough, but it was kind of boring, so I didn't show it. Last bit of woodworking. I need something to keep the belt from undoing itself. I'm gonna put a dowel here in, in the tip of the belt buckle and that dowel should go inside the hole that those holes that go in belts. Well, you've seen a belt, you know what I'm talking about. I hope. I just don't know any of the terms. You'll notice that I've already glued and so sewed, sewn, well, stitched the end of the belt into the belt buckle. And I'm starting to grow fond of it. As for the doll, I'm going to use the drill as a makeshift lathe and thin the doll to four millimeters. I don't want to do the math here but that's the size of the hole punch I had for the letter so it had to be four millimeters again it took a while this is not really a lathe and I don't know how to turn wood but it worked as soon as it fit here is the final result Subscribe to keep following my woodworking journey. I put videos on every other week and I do my best on them.